Okay, good morning everybody. It's just gone um, 10 a.m. So I'd just like to um, welcome you all to this webinar on putting a plagi plagiarism on the agenda. Just to let you know, anyone attending the webinar today is currently muted to help avoid any audio issues. We do ask, however, that you get involved and ask any questions that you have by using the chat box. You will see the control panel for the GoToWebinar software we're using today. The panel is normally at the top right hand corner of your screen and can be expanded or hidden by clicking on the white arrow on an orange background. Within the control panel, you will see a questions drop down box where you can type in your questions. So putting plagiarism on the agenda. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Claire Bristow. I am a senior learning consultant for Epigem and I am based in Melbourne, Australia. And our other co-host is Lucy Cook, the Academic Partnerships Manager, who is based in Adelaide. Today's agenda, there will be a brief introduction, an overview of avoiding plagiarism. We will then jump into a demonstration of the actual program, and there will be some time at the end for your questions. Just a little bit of history about Epigeum. Epigeum was founded at Imperial College in London in 2005, and was purchased by Oxford University Press in 2015. Epigeum is a leading provider of interactive online courseware for universities and colleges worldwide, making consistent cost-effective training achievable for everybody. Epigeum programs support three areas of learning within a university or college. Those areas are research, support and wellbeing, and studying. Avoiding plagiarism is part of the studying area of the programs. In this session, we will cover the following, the course development, the 2021 update, what is plagiarism, the learning outcomes of the program, plagiarism in the news, an overview of the course, and a brief introduction to the implementation and customization of the program. <clears throat> Epigeum courses are digitally born, not created from existing sources, and they are developed in collaboration with a number of universities. Avoiding plagiarism was developed in collaboration with this list that you can see on your screen now. In June 2021, Epigeum released an update of this program. The content has been recently updated and streamlined to fit the current context with a balance between text and activities including video interviews with students and tutors, additional key terms and definitions on relevant screens, and current plagiarism stories from across sectors. The updated format and design ensures the course is easily navigable and ensures the functioning of the activities is more intuitive. <clears throat> the Oxford English Dictionary describes plagiarism as the action of someone taking someone else's work or idea and passing it off as your own. Theft. Are you confident that the students at your institution understand the definition of plagiarism? Are they familiar with the key terms associated with plagiarism and academic integrity? Can they identify different types of plagiarism? For example, self-plagiarism, which is copying material you have previously produced and passing it off as new work. Do they understand the importance of referencing and accurate citing? A reference that provides information of where, where a particular quote or text is to be found, or a bibliographic reference. The course provides online resources to help extend your learning, including real life cases of plagiarism, from music plagiarism to political speeches and scientific papers and art. We will have a quick look at this when we demonstrate the course during the webinar. Plagiarism remains a common problem in universities. The long-term results of a student plagiarising can cause anguish for the student and the university alike. Creating a positive message about the importance of academic integrity is far more important than simply punishing students. This course will give you the assurance that all your students have been adequately prepared for their assignments 
The illustrations on this slide demonstrate the complexities and many parts of a citation. <clears throat> the course is approximately one hour of content divided into four units. What is plagiarism? Plagiarism in context, referencing and avoiding plagiarism. And by the end of the course, students will be able to define plagiarism and the different types of plagiarism, recognise and describe the key terms that relate to plagiarism and explain the importance of referencing. They should be able to compile accurate and citations and references using the activities within the program, correctly paraphrase and acknowledge others' works and make better use of the referencing software available to them at their university to manage their citations and references and develop strategies that will help them avoid plagiarism in their own work. Interactive scenarios will illustrate some of the situations that they may encounter during the course of their studies. You can listen to interviews with staff and students. Practice exercises will help them identify examples of plagiarism and practice how to cite and create references. And multiple choice quizzes will test their understanding and knowledge of plagiarism citing and how to create references. There's just a screenshot of the course and what you will see when you go into the course. So we have here plagiarism in the news, um, an activity and some definitions. So we're just going to now jump into the program. Oh boy. Uh, I'm just going to take a shortcut. Check that I'm logged in. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to launch the program here. I mentioned earlier that avoiding plagiarism was part of the studying screen stream of, pro of products and you'll see that in that top corner there. The first thing that you will see when you open up the first page of the program is that there is a welcome screen here. We have the option to, um, at any point during the, the course, you can um, download the program and you have a technical support, not download the program, you can download the page and you have a technical support um, page here as well. So if you are having issues with any of your browsers, or you need to talk about printing or what technology is required, it's under the technical support button. Oh dear. Just a moment, please. Okay. You can navigate through the course by using the little arrows at the top here. So this will take us back a page and this will move us through page by page. On the welcome page, you will see that there is um, a description of the learning outcomes and what you should be able to achieve by the end of the program. The introduction, which shows you some of the key features of the course. How to use the modules here. So the content that is in the modules, including what we call pods. Now these pods are clickable boxes that contain more information such as additional information, useful links to help to expand on external resources, your context which relate to your institution and any optional activities that may pop up during the course. We also have practice scenarios and a review quiz at the end of the program and of course the expert panel who helped create this course at the development stage.
Okay, so the unit one is what is plagiarism? Yeah, so again, we have the text print version, the technical support button, and this is, we estimate that it will take the user approximately two minutes to work their way through this page. Again, this is one of those useful pods that I mentioned earlier. So this will take you outside. So if your users or students are interested, they can have a look at the Oxford University's resources on plagiarism um, or any other useful information here. We have additional information pods here. And there is an activity on this page. So in this activity, you click on the words to find out more of the fundamental reason um, integrity values here and to go to the top of the page we just click on this little arrow here within unit one there is um, a section called plagiarism and key terms with an activity now in this activity you are asked to match the term on the left hand side to the correct definition on the right by clicking on the boxes that you wish to connect. So in this case common knowledge and then you must select from here. If you collect the right answer you will see that the answer pops up in a little light box here. It gives you an idea or explains why that answer is correct and then you close and you'll see that there's a little green tick here. Copyright, quotation. So this is a good way of users, users testing their knowledge. Now, if you do get something wrong, it will ask you to try again. So you can have as many goes as you like. You're not limited to just one. A secondary reference. proper acknowledgement, and of course, what is paraphrasing. And there are a number of activities similar to this throughout the program. Plagiarism in context, we're just going to jump into plagiarism in the news. <clears throat> so the idea here is that your students or yourselves can select the headlines to read the articles. In this case, I'm going to click on the art article. Now you'll notice that this has taken us outside the program. Um, so plagiarism doesn't just mean copying written words. You can also plagiarise music, art or design. So the full article is listed here. I'll just go back. And you'll see that there's a number, there's one here on design. Um, there's an author here, um, scientific papers. SA Mills, etc. And again, it's estimated that it was approximately two. Remember that this is only an estimate. We move forward. So again, we have another activity here where you can test your understanding of some of these words, as well as direct copying. There is an explanation here, contract cheating, self plagiarism. Unit three is called referencing. So this screen on citations explores in more detail how to correct, how to create a correct citation. There is an additional um, information here within this pod. So here it talks about footnotes and endnotes and what they actually are. If we move down the page, you will see that it's, um, we are talking here about Harvard style, numeric style, and you have the option here to actually practice creating a citation. So this is the example. You get the option here to create your own and then you can view the correct way to create that citation. These activities are designed to be used more than once. So here we can cite a journal and you have the little box here, a chapter within a book and citing a secondary reference as well as a website.
<coughs> referencing tools or bibliographic management tools such as EndNote, Zotero, Mandalay and RefWorks allow you to store the details of your sources in one place and keep track of them. Further down here we have a Your Context pod. This pod directs students to ask which tools your institution recommends and any training that may be available. And you can follow this little scenario again by just clicking on the next button and moving forward. So in closing, towards the end of the program, you will see a course summary um, to reiterate what um, the course was aimed to explain and the different kinds of plagiarism, how to collect, re, correctly paraphrase, cite and reference work here. Yeah. We also have the resource bank for each unit. So in unit one, what is plagiarism? These are the resources, unit two, unit three, and unit four. So these can also be accessed at any time. The references that were, were referred to during the development of the course, and I mentioned throughout the course, and finally, we close with a course quiz. The quiz is comprised of 10 multiple choice questions randomly selected from a bank of 100 questions. A certificate is available for students to download after they have successfully passed the quiz and the pass rate is set at 80%. The quiz may be attempted multiple times, but each time the student will see a different set of questions. Okay, the flexible self-paced format of the program facilitates a blended learning approach and we provide the instructor's manual to enable you to get started. Avoiding plagiarism can be hosted on your, your institution's virtual learning environment or LMS and we provide access to your students via Epigem's dedicated online platform. So thank you for your time. If you would like more information or to register for a no obligation free trial, please get in touch with us at this address or visit epigm.com courses studying avoiding plagiarism. I'll leave that screen up there for a little moment so that you can take down any um, details that you might need. And are there any questions? Please use the chat box. Um, my colleague Lucy will be mo also monitoring the chat box if there are any questions. Okay, somebody has asked the question, will I have access to this website for free? This program is available on a subscription model, which means that you can subscribe for one year or three years. We can provide you with a two week trial so that you can view it first and make a an educated decision on whether you would like to subscribe to it. If you are interested in subscribing, we can also provide you with the pricing. One of the things that is um, we strive to do at Epigem is that we make the courses available in so that they can be accessed 24 seven. So if a student is at home or on the bus or on public transport, these programs are designed for dip in, dip out. They do not have to go through the program and do modules one, two, three, and four. They could go jump straight into module three and look at references, or they could go straight into module two. They can access the program as often as they like, um, whenever they like. The quiz can be attempted on multiple occasions. So if they want to achieve a full 100% score mark and they're not happy with what they've achieved previously, they can go back in and, and do the quizzes again. Um, so as I said, this is also designed for modular learning or for blended learning. So it could be used in conjunction with a, um, a library session where you're showing students how to use RefWorks or EndNote or Zotera, 
or explaining a bibliographic management tool, you can actually incorporate some of these activities within those sessions as well. Claire, maybe one question. Um, this is Lucy. Hi, everyone. Um, maybe one question would be, is this course suitable for students from different disciplines across the university? Yes, it is, because we're covering Harvard or APA or any of the other bibliographic styles. So it is um, one thing that you would need to do is just check with your institution which bibliographic style or referencing style is preferred at your institution. Um, and also with bibliographic management tools such as RefWorks or EndNote or Zotero, you're already supplying, you're already storing that information. So if you find a reference and you put it straight into your EndNote account, you then have the option to go through and, and adjust that citation. Um, but you do need to be very careful that your citation is correct, um, particularly with spacing and um, brackets and columns, etc. But yes, it is designed um, for anybody from any discipline. Thank you, Lucy, that was a great question. So please feel free to contact either myself or Lucy for any questions that you might have about the program. Thank you very much everybody for attending. It was a pleasure to talk to you. So take care everybody. Thank you Claire.